Despite the fact it's probably the cheapest Raspberry Pi clone on AliExpress, there are literally zero reviews of this SBC on YouTube. However, beyond sweet price, there are some curious pitfalls and straight away concerning features. Before I start the review, you need to understand that all of the things shown in the video, including the main subject of this review, were bought with my mother's money which I took when she was sleeping, so none of those were sponsored, unfortunately. First of all, despite sharing the same name, Walnut by 1B are different boards. One of the boxes has a quality control sticker on it, the other one of the cheaper variant doesn't. Didn't it pass quality control? Ah, uh, who cares? Walnut Pi Zero didn't even get a box at all. This is 1GB version and it has H616 CPU and DDR3 RAM, while the 4GB version has DDR4 RAM and H618 CPU, so those are basically different boards. I also noticed that the Wi-Fi module on the cheaper one is labeled with random numbers, while on the 4GB variant it's properly labeled, even the color of PCBs differs a bit. Other characteristics seem to be common for two boards, they have three USB second gen ports and three is not four, which means there will be an ugly hole in most of the enclosures you will find for this device, and you will find plenty of them available, because it shares Raspberry Pi 4 form factor, so any case from Raspberry Pi 4 will fit this device. It has micro HDMI, which I hate, outdated 100 megabit Ethernet port, and colored 40 pin GPIO header just like on Asus Tinkerboard, which is a good thing. Let's find a suitable OS. There is an official website of the manufacturer and, oh wow, it's all in Chinese of course. There even is a documentation, but you need to use a translator. It suggests downloading two images. One is Debian server and another one is Debian with XFCE UI. I chose the second option. I added two aluminum heatsinks to avoid throttling, they don't come with Walnut by 1B unless you buy a more expensive option, which you don't want to do. For video to be more interesting, for comparison, I will add another SBC with the same H618 CPU and 4GB of RAM, called Rock Pi K2B. Differences? 1 gigabit Ethernet, normal HDMI, but less GPIO pins, and a unique form factor which limits you to only one case which you need to 3D print yourself. I bought it as cheaply as I bought these boards, but prices for it skyrocketed, while the Walnut Pi price is more or less stable if you can say this word anymore. On the website, I also noticed a tab called Device Map. When I opened it, I was surprised. Like, write in the comments if you know why would anyone want to share their location with some unknown Chinese brand and to show on the map which is available on the public website. I, I simply don't get it, but the documentation says that you can turn off this feature. Where in a system? Finally, the first thing I noticed is that the screen resolution is broken. Great start. After updating the system, unfortunately nothing changed. The problem was me using a capture card, connecting directly there were no issues. Now let's run a Geekbench 6 test. 1GB version simply doesn't run the test. At that time I missed that the Geekbench 6 requires 2GB of RAM, and that thing had only one. 4GB version gave me this result, and K2B, with same CPU, although different operating system, gave me these numbers, very different numbers, and kinda upsetting ones for Walnut Pi 1B. Maybe there is a RAM difference, turns out yes, there is, but the thing is, it's in Walnut's favor. Walnut has 4GB of LPDDR4, and K2B, despite listing same LPDDR4 in its specifications, arrived with DDR3. Unfortunately, I couldn't start a dispute because I received this SBC more than two weeks earlier, but, well, it's a shame. Cooling was the same as well as the power source. Geekbench 6 reports 0 MHz on Walnut CPU, which might indicate that our processor simply doesn't run on the proper frequency. NeoFetch also doesn't get any reading of the frequency. Maybe it's fixable, maybe even easily fixable, but it's official firmware. Why should I be the one fixing it? Hey, it's me here on the map. Now you know where I live. Here you can see GPU tests on stock firmware. I don't really understand any of those numbers, so I leave this to you. As far as I understood this, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, there is no hardware acceleration on this device on Linux. In the end, we have a classic Raspberry Pi clone. Limited support, cheapest components, random quality and good price. 
Those might be good for server applications and only if the price for it in your region is lower than on Orange Pi or any other better supported alternatives and also if you cannot repurpose other devices like mini PCs, thin clients or the TV box from my previous video to serve your goal. Officially, they are sold only on Taobao and AliExpress, I will leave links to the official listings anyway, even though I cannot recommend buying these devices in most cases. Bye.